Over the last two months, I've been tracking prophecies made by self-proclaimed prophets about the U.S. presidential election. I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said he won't. I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Trump will win. He will sit in that office for four more years. Will it be an eight-year presidency? Absolutely. And when the prophecies failed, they began pushing the dates back. Mark your calendar for December 12th, 2020. A red wave is going to come because God wants to bring an amazing victory for President Donald J. Trump. This is the words of the Lord. For you do not think I can make things right by Christmas. I can too. This drama could go through December into January. Donald Trump is the president, and on Inauguration Day, he will be the president. So I think this thing is going to go out to the end. As they began to realize their prophecy was failing, they pressured their congregations to go to D.C. in an attempt to make it come true. On January the 6th, it's going to be wild. You can go to wildprotest.org or jerichomarch.org and you can register. If you're watching or in this room and you can make it to D.C., I encourage you to go. You go. We're sending a big group of people up there again this time. Go. Go, go, go. Across the nation, you'll hear people referring to this as the new 1776. 1776. What happened in 1776? Well, a number of things. There were people, though, that put their life and their fortune, their families, and all they had on the line for the sake of, of this nation. We are trusting God with all, our, all of our hearts. We show up. We show up to church. We, show, we just show up. In my last video, I showed just how big of a role Christian nationalism played in the storming of the U.S. Capitol. I'll put a link to that below. So they went to the Capitol riots, and one of the pastors even attempted to pull a Moses and symbolically part the Capitol reform. Reflecting pool. All of you that are watching, I want you to stretch your hands this way and we're going to stretch this staff toward the Capitol. And we're going to part that seat. It's going to be symbolic of Moses. And yet still nothing seemed to change. Even as Republicans began turning on Trump, who now faced a second impeachment, these pastors kept doubling down. I refuse to let it get on me. I refuse to quit. I don't quit. Bless God, I'll quit. Just don't quit. I'm a covenant man. I don't ever quit. I don't ever quit. Maybe I don't quit this election. Maybe you should, You can't though. tell me over a hundred or thousands of prophetic voices, intercessors, believers all missed it. And God has assured me today when he walked into my room and woke me up at noon, almost noon, 11.55 a.m. And he came in and he yelled as loud as he possibly could, Can you not stand and not turn to the left and give yourself a... Why? When did they become the exact same things that they used to make fun of, like, on the aesthetic side? You know what I mean? Like, this is... I don't do demons. I mean, she's got the fucking constitution draped on her shit, but like. Kind of weird that uh, she's. I mean, she looks like the, the meme of uh, how leftists are supposedly, how leftists supposedly look like. It's a partner to the evil that wants to take this land. Well, I say no, it will not happen. It will end and it will be done because I say it will be done. Watch my hand move. Now that man is done with their process, I will put my show on. And justice will be served, says your God. So stand in the light or run to the darkness. But nothing will stop me from my plan at putting my son, Donald Trump, back in that White House. There's still something that God can do that can work in, in, in a miracle. And, you know, who I think it was John Quincy Adams that came back and served a second term later. If you prophesied eight years, is it that it's four now and four later? No, no, it is not. It's four continual years. <gasps> the Lord has anointed and has appointed uh, Trump to be a president a second term. It's not 2024. It's right now in the next couple of weeks. And God did choose Pence for eight years after Trump's eight years. And, you know, I'm a true prophet. I only say what God tells me to say. The Lord again spoke to me and said, this will not be fully settled 
until January the 18th. Right now, it looks like our hopes are being doused. Next week, it looks like our hopes are being doused, but that's when the fire falls and things begin to shift and change. That's called moving the goalposts. Nothing is too late. God is going to fulfill what he promised, what he prophesied through the prophets. This is the crucial day. I don't think it's over. I still, I, I'm sticking with it, folks. Here I am. I'll be here going, I'm still believing. God is able in the last hour to do something impossible. You may see inauguration tomorrow. Here's the thing. President Trump's farewell speech is, 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 is this. It's, it's like I said, look at how many times people go on farewell tours, okay? It doesn't mean goodbye. Does Folks, sometimes God, just like you when you wake up in the morning, decide to say, we're going to hit the snooze button. We're going to put a hold on prophecy. We're simply waiting for the right moment to prophesize. What do you not understand? God works in mysterious ways. La ilaha illallah, brothers. <laughs> Inshallah, brothers. You understand? Amen. Doesn't mean that it's over. Bruh, this is the US presidential election. This isn't Ozfest. Joe Biden and Kamala, Kamala, whatever her name is, Harris, will never be president and vice president. Stop calling them elect. Joe Biden didn't win. He's not the president. He will never be the president. And come January the 20th, I'm telling you, I'll be bing, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner, referring back to this video. Barring some. Oh, goddamn, I had that holy spit come out of my mouth, man. That holy spit. Coming out of my mouth. Bing, 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 I say. I tell you what. Big event in just a few minutes. Not my president. That's what the liberals said, and I'm saying the same goddamn thing now. Moments, we will have a new president, and he will be called President Biden. You want to poke it? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because... Today, the Twitter sphere has been crazy. YouTube has been nuts. My phone has blown up. I mean, I got full-grown pastors, okay? Oh, you do. Full-grown adult men sending me text messages, sending me inbox messages, asking me when I'm going to repent and resign my church because I said Trump was going to win the election and Trump didn't win. Let me tell you something. Trump won by landslide, ladies and gentlemen. So we don't have one thing to apologize for. Uh, uh, uh. You didn't just say Biden would never be president. You said Trump would be re-inaugurated and never leave the White House. Trump is getting back in that White House. Matter of fact, he is never going to leave. He will be re- Dude, why was this fucking full-grown man? Thank you, Mom. Why was this full-grown man Thinking that he could, I mean, I guess at this point, he can literally get away with it. It's brisket. My mama made brisket for me. Not chicken tendies. I guess it, like, doesn't matter. Because his followers are delusional. And they will never, ever, ever in a million fucking years question him. Or his authority with God. Because questioning him is questioning God. Elected and but we can just get away with saying this shit. Term, 100%. I'm telling you, I'll be wing, bing, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner, referring back to this video. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the big deal? The Bible's pretty forgiving about false prophecy, right? Let's go to the Word of God and find out what it says about prophets and prophecy so that we don't fail. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Whoopsie time! How shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. I don't care if everybody stones me, false prophet. I'm not. Bro, but uh, homosexuality, that's a sin. False prophets? Nah, that's, that's profitable. 
homosexuality on the other end. That's the real sin. That's what, the, that's what because, the Bible says. See, Christy and I are going to be in Washington, D.C. at the inauguration on January the 20th, standing there like we did in 2016, celebrating with the Lord that Donald J. Trump is president of the United States. That prophet shall die. Oopsie. Do not pay attention to the news, to the headlines, to the reports. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is referring to the Old Testament prophet who um, um, needed to be uh, accurate in their prophetic word. I'll ask it again. Do you think people in the prophetic got it wrong? And if it wasn't God speaking to them, who was speaking to them? So if we go to the, I don't, you know, I don't know why we're so interested in if, if the people in prophetic got it wrong. It's kind of like, yeah, why you know, wouldn't we be? Why wouldn't we be? Well, because Hitler is on his way to Poland. And right now they're having a debate in uh, England Get Churchill, and now that the war cabinet's assembled, everyone that was seeing this scenario wants the scalp of those who were not on the same page. And Churchill goes, put that behind you right now. We've got bigger fish to fry. Let's just say we've all made mistakes. We're in the middle of the war for our survival. Let's unify. As their followers began calling them out for their failed prophecies and demanded that they apologize and repent, they refused to back down. But their prophecy videos on YouTube began slowly disappearing. I noticed today some of our uh, pro- Wait. Having a debate. Well, because Hitler is on his way to Poland, and right now they're having a debate in uh, England Get Churchill, and now that the war cabinet's assembled, everyone that was seeing... Oh. He's saying Joe Biden is Hitler, and the American government is Poland, and he's, he's like, you know, leave the appeasement behind, and let's focus on the future to defeat Hitler. Our uh, programs have been deleted off YouTube. Imagine that. Uh-huh. Now I'm no prophet, but I predict that if I ask you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell, some of you will do so. Please do that now. Well, hot diggity. You'd think by this point they would have realized their mistake, but on the contrary, they were just getting started. When has God ever said, I'll do it at your time, or I'll do it when you want me to do it? Same? He's always said, you must believe and persevere, right. and I'll do these things. Anytime the word of God is in charge in your life, it has free reign to produce exactly what it is said to do. But when you take it back, then it stops. And Satan didn't stop it. We stop it with unbelief. We've got to not make the same mistake that Israel did throughout their history. They stoned true prophets who in fact turned out that it was right. They needed to afford the prophecy to breathe and they needed to allow God to do what he said. Come back and talk to me in four years. Moving the goalposts. I started having a premonition a few days ago that this was going to go to the inauguration. And so the fault is yours again, folks. Because you didn't believe hard enough. That's why God decided to change the prophecy. I could not be wrong. It's you. And that God would, would work after that to change things. I had a dream sent to me that confirmed this. Goalposts. Don't anyone give up. These dates and time, you're January 6th, you're December 14th, you're January 20th. Mm -hmm. These right. are man's dates. These aren't God's dates. Those words are still alive over President Trump. Those words are still alive for the future of what we're heading into. This thing is not over. These prophetic words are still alive. They're still working in the realm of the spirit. This is far from being over. Uh-huh. Sure, and the Broncos can still win the 1990 Super Bowl if we just pray hard enough. Things began to look pretty bleak. We're at this point where we have no answers in the natural how this thing is going to be resolved. However, that does not move us off our faith. You say, well, you guys are just crazy. Okay, we'll take that. Watch and see, watch and see what happens. If only there was some way that the prophecy could still come true. And that's when Sid Roth, had an epiphany. Time travel is real. Jesus no. is the No. No way. I refuse. I refuse to believe that evangelical pastors, televangelists, no. I refuse that they would go this far. This is, you know what the prophecy is here? The prophecy is what I fucking said time and time again, which is that conservatives 
in an effort to cope with uh, the, the reality that they choose to believe in will literally create some of the most creative storylines I've ever seen in my entire life. In an effort to deny reality, they would rather believe, not that Joe Biden became president because, you know, more, more people voted for Donald Trump, but instead, whatever this is. Original time traveler. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Great Scott! Could it be? Just because it didn't finish up in our timeline of January 20th, that does not mean it is over. You have God's event, man's calendar. God's not subject to man's calendar. You have God's timing and you have man's timing. Let's talk about God's timing. God's got something up his sleeve. Of course, it all started to make sense. There was a problem with the space-time continuum. Just as I thought, this proves my theory. His head's gone. It's like, it's like it's been erased. God was in trouble. I believe it was God's will for Donald Trump to be president. I also believe that God... I want to hear what these guys have to say about moral relativism. Because it's like, they talk about postmodernists uh, being uh, at the peak of like, the, the, the most responsible for destroying Western civilization. And obviously, like, they believe in an objective good and evil and shit, right? Like, their, their morality is... is Super rigid. And yet, here they are. No? I mean, he's going to the extents that I've never fucking seen. To straight up fucking uh, uh, say that, like, you know, actually, we're in a wrong timeline. That, uh... We're in the uh, wrong timeline and that, you know, uh, string theory and, and all these different reasons uh, are, are the reason why uh, Donald Trump is not president. Like, it's nuts. In the real timeline, we got fucking Trump's Twitter that hasn't been banned, uh, you know? This is going to sound terrible for theology out there, but I don't think that God always gets what he wants. But Sid Roth had a plan. Why does God need our prayers in order to shift things that he can shift on his own? He's God. You know, why is his will dependent on our prayers? God does his part. Man must do his part. And so they started to pray, prophesy, and speak in tongues. I'm going to start in tongues, and I believe that I am going to laugh about all of these problems, and I want, I want all the musicians, Robin and Robin and, and their, their family, uh, to enter in. I want everyone viewing us right now to enter in because we are at our Red Sea, and but... God. I want you to know I'm not making that laughter up. What's more embarrassing? Being a Twitch streamer or doing that? I feel like we found it. That's the one form of like broadcaster that's worse than being a Twitch streamer, I think. I have chosen my act and you will see it, says the Lord, and it will be in my perfect timing and you will hear the movement of my feet as I shake, shake, shake. shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. And yet, nothing seemed to be working. Something else was going on. And if you're the enemy, let's say you're Satan, and you're going, hmm, how am I going to stop God's plan? How about cutting off God's prophecy? He's trying to get you to distrust his prophets 
so that you'll distrust the father. Soon Saddam and I will rule the world. <laughs> Clearly, mm. Satan had to be stopped. Fortunately, Sid Roth had another idea. Imagine if a million Christians were laughing at the devil right now. Yeah, ha ha, hey, devil the won't the know which way to go. On your ha 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 Whoa, ha 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 He's, re he's literally laughing, by the way. That's real. <laughs> I've never seen someone look so sad while laughing. <laughs> Bro, these dentures are gonna fucking fall out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the dominoes started to fall, maybe. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. And the truth of the matter is, it's not over till God says it's over. Checkmate atheists. <sighs> Billy Ray Cyrus, brother. That's, you know, look how far he's come.